morning, good afternoon, good evening. We have a record number of participants from around the world. That's why I'm saying good morning, afternoon, or evening. My name is Herman Rutgers, and I'm very honored to be your moderator today. At the start, I would like to inform you that this webinar will be recorded and can be viewed on the Europe Active website later today. This is the second Europe Active CEO webinar in cooperation with FIBO, and we are excited to have today such a world-class panel of speakers. I would like to thank FIBO for their strong support for Europe Active and for technically hosting this webinar today. And first, I would like to ask Silke Frank, FIBO Event Director, to say a few words of welcome. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, dear Herman, thank you for your kind words of introduction. I'm very pleased that we are meeting again today and have the opportunity to exchange ideas. The great response to the first webinar, for which I'm very grateful to Europe Active, has shown how important it is that we actively seek dialogue in this circle. When I see who is logged in today, it confirms once again the importance to push the exchange of experiences on a virtual basis. COVID-19 has turned our era upside down. Never before in the recent past has humanity experienced a comparable lockdown of economic and social life. It is indeed something like the hour zero, which is far more devastating than what we have experienced in the course of financial and economic crisis. The question that currently concerns all of us most, including FIBO, as we are planning uh, to run the show from October 1st to 4th, is how to get the entire system back on track carefully, responsibly, but also in such a way that it has perspectives for our industry, which with 65 million club members under the contact ban and the state-imposed closure of clubs, is struggling with the consequences in a special way. Approaches and political initiatives to this exist in many individual countries on a European level. For this reason, the topic that we are focusing on today is of central importance for the survival of the industry. I highly appreciate that we are exchanging different views on this topic today in this circle and look forward to the discourse, to the discourse, sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much, Silke. We're very honored today to have Neri Alessandri, the founder and president of Technogym and the Wellness Foundation and a very strong supporter of Europe Active to address us today. Over to Neri in Italy. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I hope you and your families are well. Dear friends, we are facing the COVID war, definitely. The situation is improving in many countries, also in Italy. Italy included, we have the situation is improving every day, fortunately. The COVID emergency has accelerated the digital transformation. In few months, we'll be in 2025. In five months, five years. It's amazing change. In the past, the digital was a nice to have. Now, it's a must to have. The COVID emergency has made health a top priority for everybody. Um, the lockdown impact has created huge problems for diabetes, hypertension, obesity, and stress. Lockdown has created a huge socialization needs. We know that exercise is medicine. For this reason now, the wellness on the go, wellness lifestyle, anytime, anywhere, is the right strategy. We believe in the wellness connected lifestyle management opportunity at home, in the club, at work, outdoor, every day. In the last weeks, we have seen an explosion of clubs offering at home training experience. Today, clubs need to build an ecosystem to manage the user journey, to manage the new needs, to manage the new lifestyle. People want to go to the club as soon as possible because, because clubs are near, locally, are near and safe. 
club have uh, saved protocols in place, training on equipment create social distance automatically, digital manage flow and capacity in the space, club can manage the wellness on the go. Guys, I am worried, I am worried, but I am positive. I am positive for the future because club can gain spending share versus travel, holidays, events. And we have amazing opportunity to change our business model. Now, now wellness is the real mega trend and sustainability human centric approach. After this COVID impact, everybody awareness is increased to the wellness uh, lifestyle benefit. We need to be united to make government's request. We need uh, as an industry. Technology is open worldwide and we continue to invest in digital innovation services and uh, relationship. To win the COVID war, we need trust. We need teamwork. We need to build a strategic partnership in the long term. I'm sure that we'll be continue to realize our dream to change the world. Let's move for a better world. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Nerio. Very, very wise words. Um, our next speaker is Rene Moos, CEO of Europe's leading fitness chain, Basic Fit. Basic Fit owns and operates over, five, over 800 clubs with 2.3 million members in five countries. Sadly, of course, today all clubs are closed since mid-March. Rene will explain to us how Basic Fit has communicated with its members during this closed period. So over to Rene in his home office in Belgium. Hello, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, well, I made a small uh, presentation just to show you what we did um, with Basic Fit. Uh, maybe we can go to the next slide. I have uh, eight topics that I want to discuss. If you can go to the next slide. Hello, hello, yep. Yeah. Uh, so these are the eight topics that uh, I would like to uh, discuss. It all started with uh, closing our clubs. So if we go to the next slide, what we uh, did when uh, we closed our clubs, we uh, really started communicating directly to our uh, customers, of course, our staff, the personal trainers in the club, GX instructors. And it was a, a big shock, of course, uh, because it came uh, very fast uh, in all countries at the same time, more or less. Uh, it was one day in between. Uh, and we had to close down immediately our head, uh, head office. So uh, we had a very open and transparent uh, tone of voice, uh, as you can see on this uh, slide. So maybe you should go to the next slide. Um, because closing clubs, of course, we've all done that already. So we should not uh, talk too much about that anymore. Uh, the compensation, I think, uh, if you go to the next slide, is definitely uh, a very big... Uh, thing for members. We had 75% of our members paying till uh, May 1st, their contribution. 25% wanted to uh, freeze the membership uh, immediately. So when uh, we had to close down, we communicated uh, more or less the same day, uh, telling them that we would compensate all our members, uh, but that we come back in that in three weeks. And that was good because the three weeks we had time to really discuss uh, and get feedback from our members, what they thought would be a, a fair compensation. So we ended up uh, offering these uh, five different uh, types of comp uh, compensations and we were able to do the direct debit till May 1st. So that, that went well. If we go to uh, the next slide. Uh, so we did some A-B testing uh, just before we launched everything. Um, that was helpful. Uh, we changed some of our compensation uh, uh, schemes uh, and overall we had uh, good feedback on that. So if you go to the next slide. Uh, so the, the member feedback was uh, 
very good. So also on social media, um, we get a lot of remarks. We get a lot of uh, feedback from our uh, members that they were happy how we were handling it. And we go to the next slide. Next slide. So uh, then we start organizing uh, some uh, immediately uh, after the close down, of course, the at home uh, workouts. Uh, so we had our virtual classes, which, which we've been working already on for uh, more than three years. Uh, but we also wanted to organize something uh, bigger, something special. So we organized the biggest home gym day. Um, if you go to the next slide, we can, uh, see what that, that was. So we have, uh, what I said, we have our own studio where we, for the last uh, three years, been taping and making exercises for, uh, for our members. Um, so we had set six different workouts. And uh, the first day we organized was uh, April uh, uh, 4th. And if we go to the next slide, we can see some uh, numbers there. Oh, we have a little film. Maybe we can play that first. <laughs> We can go to the next, then you have an uh, overview of the, of the results, the people we reached. And, uh, and at the first day, we had 800,000 people across your, Europe uh, listening in and working out uh, with us. So that was, uh, I think, a very successful uh, day for us. So if we go to the next slide, uh, some more color on uh, what we did with the social app and the content. So if we again uh, move on the page uh, further. So we really uh, focused um, a lot on the Instagram and Facebook uh, on a daily basis with the classes, which most of you all did. So we uh, uh, launched some new uh, podcasts. We, we had uh, different uh, events. And also we communicated a lot with our personal trainers and also they uh, added the new content to our uh, system. So overall, uh, the main thing was to really stay in uh, contact with the members. Uh, on uh, on a daily basis and what we saw that we reached great numbers millions of people uh, using uh, our content so if you go to the next slide you can uh, have a look at the, the amount of uh, people uh, uh, that were actually involved in the things we uh, were doing so we had a really big increase in uh, in followers and and, and a be better engagement uh, than before so if we go to the next slide we also start working a lot with uh, different uh, companies, um, so b bigger companies with bigger uh, networks. Uh, I think that that also uh, went well. I think uh, during crisis, uh, also a lot of things can move quicker. Uh, for instance, a few of these companies we talked already with them for for six months, and uh, with the crisis, uh, we made a deal with them uh, within days. So, uh, so overall, we, uh, we got engaged with a lot of uh, external companies and got in contact with their employees or uh, their members. Uh, of course, with the use of trying to get our database uh, bigger uh, and uh, be in contact with more and more people, uh, trying to get them to move uh, from the home uh, situation. So if we go to the next uh, um, slide. We can talk about uh, the video uh, platform. So if we uh, go to the next, then uh, this is how our uh, uh, app uh, looks like. Uh, we had uh, a lot of uh, people uh, using it. Uh, like I said before, we have over uh, 3 million uh, people uh, using the full class. So not only starting and looking at it for five minutes, but really actually following the full class. So we were very uh, happy with that uh, number. So if we go to the next slide, Next, please. Next slide. 
So this is what we've also been doing, uh, giving the app uh, that normally you have to be a member of uh, Basic Fit to download the app. We now uh, gave it for free to everybody to download it. Uh, we think in uh, for the people now at home, it is uh, helpful so they can uh, follow some classes. Uh, uh, and, and, and in the future for us, it's also, of course, a lead generation tool. Uh, we have a lot of people now uh, using it for free that are not a member. So maybe in uh, in time they will also become a member of uh, of our gyms. So I think that is uh, that is very good. If we go to the next um, next slide, I think um, the main thing, uh, of course, is uh, when we had to close down. We were thinking, well, when we reopen again, what is crucially important? What is the most important part? Is of course the members and your staff. So those were the two uh, topics that we really focused on uh, in the weeks that we were closed. So uh, we send out uh, weekly uh, uh, mails uh, to our staff. We had uh, weekly calls uh, from all different levels. I was, uh, we had uh, Zoom meetings where people could ask uh, questions. We still do that on a weekly basis on uh, the different departments, uh, really stayed in contact with everybody who was, uh, was connected with uh, we, the we call the orange uh, community uh, we organized uh, parties uh, through uh, zoom uh, so that you could log in and uh, people could uh, put in uh, pictures and uh, and talk to each other all these things to keep the orange community alive um, it was in a way interesting to see that everything is possible really like Nerio said, uh, things that could have been taken five years are now done in five weeks or five months. We, what we saw, what, what changed in our company uh, in the last six weeks was unbelievable because we were able to uh, just keep continue to work while nobody was at the, at the head office. Was, uh, we continue to do meetings and improve our products and systems. So that was interesting to see that, uh, that the business can still uh, go on. And um, so the orange community, we think, was very important. We go to the next slide. Next slide. And that's the last slide, Herman. I see you were watching your... Uh, uh, your <laughs> I'm running out of time, I see. No. So just, uh, just a few things, uh, I think, uh, uh, just to, get, to, to, give, to give to you that I think is, uh, is very important. Uh, now it's not the time to uh, speak loud and give uh, big uh, action or discounts or uh, it is it is really time to do good. Uh, so what we did is uh, we continue to pay all our uh, staff 100%. All the personal trainers who were paying us rent or physiotherapists could stop immediately uh, paying us uh, because of course we know uh, we need them motivated uh, when we get back as well. Uh, our, our customers didn't have to pay from the day they were closed unless they wanted to. Um, so, so the actions you take now is definitely important how they look at you after this. Uh, so now is really the time of uh, sowing, not the harvesting. <clears throat> so I think it is very crucial that uh, we as an industry should uh, really uh, also when we start opening again, uh, not be too aggressive, but for sure make make sure we keep we keep the distance and uh, we uh, do it in a safe way. Of course, a lot of people are talking already about the, the second wave. Uh, what if that happens? Uh, of course, that could happen. And then again, maybe it's not two months, but it be closed uh, for three months. But I think we as, a, as an industry should really focus on uh, keeping distance, doing the right thing, the mouth caps, et cetera. Because if we don't do the right thing, they will close us down uh, and then maybe in a second wave, it will not be two or three months, but, but even longer. So I hope everybody is really aware that we have to do this in a very professional way. Um, one of the things uh, I think also worked well for us is that we really spend a lot of time and money in activating our community. Like I said before, uh, we are preparing now, focusing really on uh, opening again. So we have uh, different teams working on uh, different things. Like uh, our app is ready to make uh, the reservation, so we do not have uh, 50 people in our club, for instance, and 50 people waiting in front of the door, because that would, of course, be uh, really a problem. 
I hope everybody's working very hard on a reservation system. So when they open the clubs that they can really only let the people in that are allowed. And um, yeah, so all the different scenarios uh, about reopening, what, how to communicate again. I think the main uh, reason how we <laughs> communicate and how, what we should do is make sure it is safe and people feel safe. So our employees should feel safe, but also our members. So we are really working hard on the different scenarios so we could also communicate well to the questions we get in our clubs. And at last, uh, I'm a very positive uh, person. Uh, I think uh, I really look uh, forward uh, to the future. I see a lot of uh, opportunities and uh, it is quite clear that uh, being uh, fit is helpful when a virus is hitting you. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, doctors talking about how crucial it is that you are in good shape. Uh, so yes, we are, I think, definitely uh, as an industry, part of the solution. So for that, I'm really looking forward to, to the future. Thank you very, thank you very much, Rene, for an insightful uh, presentation. Our next speaker is uh, Humphrey Cobalt. Uh, Humphrey is the CEO of the Pure Gym Group, the largest operator in the UK and Denmark, and a leading presence in Switzerland and Poland. The Pure Gym Group has more than 500 gyms and 1.7 million members. Also, Humphrey's clubs are closed today. But Humphrey will share with us what his team has done during lockdown to keep the staff engaged and motivated. Over to Humphrey in London. Um, hi there, everybody. Yep, Humphrey Cowold here. Um, as Herman said, um, I run the Pure Gym Group, um, which has over 500 clubs across Europe. Um, Herman didn't uh, mention the, uh, the Danish portfolio that is a part of our um, a part of our business as well. So that's a very important part of what we do. The fitness world group that we bought um, in, uh, in January of this year. Um, on, on our presentation here, I'm going to talk about how we address the challenge of maintaining the motivation and the connection with our colleagues um, across um, the UK in particular, but this is being followed in a similar way um, in Europe as well in our Danish, Swiss and Polish markets. And we defined a model called uh, the power of three. And that was really um, about um, three uh, aspects of uh, being healthy during a time of isolation and seclusion. And there was a particular challenge in this in the UK because our, almost all, in fact, all of our operational colleagues are on furlough, covered by the government uh, regime. And uh, we, we aren't allowed to communicate in a normal business way with them, i.e. through email and those sorts of channels. So we had to think about how we energize this in a different way. And we had to invite people rather than obligate people to be a part of this, uh, this program. Um, and if we go to the second page, I can describe it a little bit more for you. Can we go to the second page? Thank you. Um, on this second page, um, what we decided to do was set the overarching objective for our colleagues that's described at the bottom of this page. And we set them a challenge. And that challenge was to come out individually and collectively stronger than we went into this lockdown and this extraordinarily difficult period. And what we said to people is why don't you try to do uh, one of three things or one each of three things on each day of the lockdown period, no matter how small or simple that thing may be. And we suggested that people think about those things in three different groupings. Firstly, we encourage them to keep living, stay fit and healthy, and live the best life that you can in the context of a difficult situation. Secondly, we encourage people to keep laughing, stay connected with one another, uh, have a smile, have some fun, even in these difficult times. And thirdly, we suggested to people, take the opportunity to learn something every day um, if you can. Think about new skills and new things that you can pick up along the way. 
if we could go to the next page, I'll expand on these a little bit. So in terms of living, we've through various platforms provided a range of different opportunities. We use Workplace, which is the Facebook at Work product um, for sharing informal information within the group. And we're still allowed to use that under the UK uh, government uh, regulations. And on Workplace, there are daily challenges every day. Um, uh, Dave and then upside down Harley have produced challenges every day and other colleagues have done this as well. Um, crazy little things. How many burpees can you do in 30 seconds? How long can you stand on your head um, for? Can you do it for two minutes? How many star jumps? How many seated dips? Simple things that pretty much anybody can have a go at and you can do it with your family, have some fun, video yourself, post it, but do a workplace challenge. Uh, we've developed a group exercise uh, program on Instagram and on our app. As Renee was saying, we've put huge amounts of effort into boosting the content in our app and we're encouraging our colleagues to take advantage of that, um, either as the app or on a timetable basis on Instagram and we record those classes and then pass them through the app um, as well. Thirdly, we're encouraging people through the blog to think about a degree of healthy eating um, and how you can eat well on a budget. These are difficult financial times uh, for everybody. And we're also spending a fair amount of time and effort in reminding people about looking after their mental health as well. We work with a lady called Dr. Sarah Hassam, who's now started producing content for us to help people think about the blend of physical and mental well-being. And we reminded people and we keep reminding people that we have um, an employee assistance program and helpline worked with our healthcare insurers to provide people with another person they can turn to if they need to, if they're feeling um, in a difficult situation or facing some particular personal challenges. So those are the key elements of the LIVE program. If we go on to the next page, please. please. Uh, the LAUGH program is the fun element of science. Here we're encouraged, encouraging people uh, to do their bit, as Renee alluded to, of, of team social, whether it's on Zoom or Microsoft Teams um, or whatever mechanism that they choose to do it. And we've left this really to people's own ingenuity and creativity and asked them to share the ideas that come up. And there are lots of things that have happened. There have been evening drinks, there's a bit of wine clubbing going on, We've had group challenges where people have got together, sometimes five or six, sometimes 40 or 50 people exercising together uh, online. Uh, we've had teams of people join volunteering groups. Um, the people who've been out just helping people and set themselves the challenge of helping somebody out there in the world uh, today. So all sorts of different social activities. One of the great challenges is remaining socially uh, connected and we've asked people to share what they do so much so other people can enjoy it learn from them and perhaps uh, repeat it themselves we're doing a fair amount on business updates um, every week and every fortnight there are four more business updates and lots more informal uh, materials that we're sharing as well through the workplace platform um, and we keep reminding people that the pure gym way and the way we do things is to uh, invite people to come into things uh, not to force or obligate people, especially in a furlough status, uh, because we don't want people, people to feel pressurized to do something. We actually think there's some very healthy uh, activity going on with members of our team, spending time with their family, with their children, and that's fine by us if they're happy doing that. We do keep reminding people of the things that bind us and keep us together, and here you can see on the right hand side an image of the baton we used for the Pure Gym National Relay that was an extraordinary event that we ran last summer, taking a baton right the way across the UK, 3,000, nearly 4,000 kilometers of running, cycling, swimming, and canoeing in order to draw our people together. And we're reminding people of those elements of our past that define the strengths of what we are as people. And then going on to the next page, please, to just talk a little bit about the learning agenda. And this learning agenda we think is very important. One of the things under the UK regulations we are allowed to do is to encourage and support people 
in learning and here there's plenty that our colleagues can do. We're encouraging people to think about transition programs. We've got new clubs to open and uh, further growth that we expect to return to in the UK, Switzerland, Denmark and Poland. So we're encouraging people to think about the transition programs that we've crafted between different roles in the organisation. We're encouraging people to uh, pay their attention to the operating model and to take some time to read the manuals, uh, read all our standard operating procedures, make sure they're as familiar as they can be with every aspect of our operation. And of course, uh, alluding to what Renee said, we're redefining key elements of that for a post-COVID-19 world. So as those documents all get updated, then we encourage people to be prepared for the future and for reopening at whatever time we're able to do that. In the center of this page, uh, we've actually just launched a new um, human resources management, a new uh, personnel uh, software platform called Dayforce, uh, which was in some ways not very good timing. It's been hard to do that as we've just been in a, in a closed down mode, but actually it's given lots of time for people to understand this. And we're encouraging people to listen to and watch the training videos and understand how that works. Uh, we've undertaken to provide anybody in the group who wants it with a uh, learning opportunity through the LinkedIn learning platform and we bought in effect an unlimited number of learning licenses for LinkedIn learning to encourage people to take the opportunity to pick up a new skill each day, do a bit of work on Excel, understand lessons of effective listening, learn more tricks and, of the trade in terms of uh, effective um, customer service and all sorts of other areas. It's an extraordinary reservoir of uh, content and opportunities for learning and we've made that accessible to our colleagues. And then finally, um, as many of you will know, we have a model where we work very closely with self-employed uh, PTs who are, uh, as far as their PTs, not technically part of our employed colleague group. But here we've continued to invest a lot of time and effort. We've got a team of about four people who are running daily live sessions with our extended PT group to explain to them how to use different platforms, how to think about selling their services online, how to provide classes online, uh, how to adapt the way that they run their businesses to the world that we're all experiencing at the moment. And that's been tremendously well supported uh, by the personal trainers. So that's the key elements of the learn side of the platform. And then to finish, just turning to a few comments on the final page, please, um, on the um, overall uh, workplace um, engagement. Uh, the platform that we use um, for this is, as I said, the Facebook platform. And here we're sharing uh, pretty much uh, anything and everything that we feel is relevant. Uh, there was an article um, that uh, I, I put together with the Times newspaper at the weekend. We share that. Uh, there was some uh, media interviews that were done on UK national radio uh, yesterday. Those have been shared. So anything that comes up that's relevant to the group and relevant to what we're doing, we share through that platform. We want to maintain a sense of community welfare. We think that's very important for people. In the center of this page, um, we do shout outs for people who are making a big difference to other people. Uh, th this is Dave Cross and uh, uh, Harley out there who are doing an extraordinary job um, with our community internally and externally to produce content and keep people moving forward. Um, and we want to extend the engagement on the right hand of this page to include the people who are most important to all our colleagues, their friends, their family that they're in lockdown with and the connections that they've got and even you know, family pets where that's relevant. So we've tried to make the community welfare and the sense of the extended family um, of our business um, a very real part of what we're trying to draw together at these difficult times. So to summarize, uh, three key, key areas, live, uh, laugh and learn. Thinking hard about uh, community welfare and community well-being, we think that's very important and staying closely connected within the rules and regulations that we have to observe around furloughing, such that when we come back together, our teams uh, will be as strong, if not stronger, than when we went into the closed down period. 
Thank you very much, uh, Humphrey. Very insightful presentation again. Uh, our last and definitely not least speaker is Gabriel Saez. Gabriel is the CEO of Ingesport, better known in Spain and Portugal under the name GoFit, the leading wellness and fitness operator with 250,000 members in 19 multifunctional centers, all currently also closed. Gabriel will be speaking from his home office, of course, in Madrid, and he's got some very specific ideas about the reopening of his facilities and will now share those thoughts with us. Gabriel. Gabriel, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, okay. you can start the presentation, Gabriel. Yeah. Okay, uh, hola, buenos días. Good morning from Madrid, from a very sunny and spectacular day from Madrid, Spain. Yes, my uh, greetings and um, um, my feelings with everybody who is damaged with this COVID-19 even in health, on, 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 with the anxiety that you might have today with the current situation, with the new paradigma. Uh, just, to, uh, just to say thank you for, for Europe Active for providing this webinar to everybody and for the excellent uh, 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 experience that shares for us, PUGM and Basic Fit, who has no presentation, one of the biggest companies, and for me is just coming with all the humility to to this to this forum just to just to say that my company uh, tries to deserves uh, the final purpose which is happiness is trainable as well to so exercise please next step next next yes just to uh, pure gym a basic fix has a basic fix has has no presentation for you 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 know all of you uh, go fit uh, probably most of you is the first time that you hear about my company our company we are the leader operator, operating company in, in Portugal, as you have seen, with so no, not many clubs, 19 clubs, but with a very relevant number of members. We, are, uh, uh, we, we present an offer for, for the 100% of the population. Uh, we don't uh, consider ourselves a, a young company, but we try to be something different. We, we try to be a provider of, of happiness. And, and the crisis has tested uh, how seriously we meant it. Uh, we mean that, uh, absolutely. My presentation is going to go very fast to the experience that, please, next next slide, please. Uh, I'm trying to, to give you four more points. Uh, one, is the, uh, one is that we are a company that, uh, as I told you, we are based in, in Spain and in, and in Portugal with a proposal of around 37 uh, euros per month, something like that, a very big and huge uh, multi-purpose uh, 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 complexes. Please, next slide. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, uh, this is, this is that, that, that we uh, were created on the, uh, on the other crisis. So I'm going to try to explain to you and talk to you about the crisis, the values that moved my company, the plan that we set when the, when the COVID-19 came, the back to operations that we are dealing out and, and the outlook that we have. So yes, uh, we came on the, we, we were created on the last crisis. Uh, you know that Spain, Italy and Greek and the Southern uh, countries of Europe, we were very damaged with, with, with the crisis. So we really know what it is about going through a, through a, through a, through a crisis. And uh, we tested our strength proposition on, on the last crisis. Uh, so now, uh, for me, it's a moment uh, and my pulse is calm. Our business was born in crisis and we thrive in, in that crisis. Um, I'm kind of proud of the results of these 10 years, but I want to say something uh, very clearly. Everything uh, that you see in the front of you is the, is the past. I'm excited in this crisis to have the chance to start our business from day zero. Is that we have a new paradigm. Every success of the past is the past. Is the moment that we have a chance to build something new, something greater, and I'm sure that we will. Uh, not just a company, but as an industry, we, which is critical uh, because uh, something that we will talk later on, I think that we are critical and it's obvious that now uh, the, the five years that Nerio say before, that now if five months is very easy to think that everybody thinks that we can be part of the solution and the, and the, and the places and, and the times are gonna be shorter. Please, if we go to next slide, please. 
now uh, uh, I say that the past has has gone, but for us it's something that stay the same, which is our vision, our mission, and our values. And we are uh, we we are aiming to be one of the best companies in the world in health and sports service. And our values, as you can see there, customer fascia, uh, focused leadership, team spirit, honesty and transparency. But please, next, next, uh, next, next slide, please. But uh, here in the mission, uh, from the day one, from the day one, our mission has been to help societies to become more capable and, help, and, and happier, uh, and but in safe and efficient environments. Providing safety is the heart of what we do and, and one of what we have to do. As a sector, we have always taken our responsibilities for this very, very seriously. But with the hearts of the trust of the customers, we must now take this to the next level, as well to be a, a, a sector that is capable to make people more, more, more healthier and more happier, but as well to do it on the safer em environment. Please, next step. Next one. Okay, so which one was, was uh, our plan? Our plan was to, uh, was, uh, was looking to, to three, three stakeholders. One, our customers, uh, to maintain the engagement and, the, and, uh, and to give to them useful service. Uh, to our staff, to give to them security, warm, growth, and, and, and for, to our society, to uh, spread solidarity and contribution to them. Now, so our, our plan is to think about uh, that this is, uh, we have a view of the company of one year, five years, and 10 years. Uh, we saw how the crisis was so defeated for our countries in 2008, 2009, with no hope about the future. And, and we know how to run a crisis, I think. So we are thinking in the long, long term. Uh, so uh, first of all, we thought in people. Uh, we put the people in front of, of, uh, of all of our uh, actions. Uh, uh, we, we work in the transformation service proposition very, very fast. Uh, I, I'm going to give you some examples. Uh, working in the plan to, be, to the new normality, uh, transforming our product in the digital readiness as well. To bridge the gap of this situation of COVID-19, we strongly believe that this is something that we know that this is that this crisis will stop someday. Uh, the, the end of this crisis is clear. And, and we try to go through this gap and all this crisis, maintaining the capability of growth of the company, not only in the expansion, but as well in the product, and with not leaving nobody behind us. Please, next step, next, next slide, please. So this is some of, of examples of what we have done for the society. Uh, for example, we were probably the first company in Spain, not in fitness, but in, in all the sectors to close uh, to shut down all, all, all our company when we saw that the only possibility of stopping the COVID-19 was to be at home. Uh, we gave our facilities uh, provided to the public authorities. Uh, uh, we gave uh, 1 million euro to fund uh, and support emergency efforts uh, with the, uh, 20 ventilators uh, to uh, hospitals of Spain. As well, we gave uh, equipment and training support to the elite athletes in Spain. Uh, we, we make a strong campaign with the Olympic Committee of, of Spain to maintain the 400 best athletes of the country on training. We open our platforms to all the town councils and all the institutions that the, they needed. For our customers, uh, from day one, we, we, make, we, we freeze uh, all the fees immediately. We open GoFit everywhere. Uh, we create a, a new, uh, well, we, we, we make uh, much more powerful movements in, in this, uh, probably similar than, than basic fit and um, and Pure Gym and, and all of you, but we have one point, uh, almost two million views uh, up to yesterday, which is probably the, the same the same access that we have in in a, in a monthly basis in in, in GoFit. Uh, mm -hmm. We open the live broadcast and and we create a, DA, a daily CRM and, and, and GoFit guide to our customers, as I told you, to give to them very useful uh, services and, and engagement with them and, and community. And, and for our team, as I told you, that we gave to them security, warm growth. Uh, we covered for them the 100% of the salary. I must in mind that in Spain, the cover of the government is only 50%. So it's a big effort for the company. But I, I put people first. And I want to be out of this crisis with, with all the team. Uh, we made the commitment to them to protect their jobs. Uh, but as well, we are, giving, we are offering to them a full training 
and we are in constant communication and engagement with them as well as we are with the customers. We provide of, of, of a full guide for them to, to fight against the COVID uh, uh, together with us. And even we put the, the money on the front to them, every salary, because now yet the workers in Spain didn't have the money from the government yet. So please, if you go forward, please. Well, this is an example of the 1 million euros that we uh, gave to the, to, the, to the society. Please, next step. Next slide, please. This is an example of the, of the, of the five trees that we offer to our customers and in different channels. Next, please. Uh, this is what we offer on the on a platform go with everywhere that we open to our customers for free and as well to all the to all uh, to external uh, members uh, we offer to them uh, as well to our members our 24 hours uh, training training support center uh, with nutrition services and a, and a full service for them next slide please this is the go for your family that we uh, we have uh, 50,000 kids in our company. So we offer to them a specific content for the families uh, together. Next slide, please. Uh, we put a strong, a strong point as well in, in, on mindfulness. Please, next slide. And now uh, let me talk about back, back to operations. Uh, we strongly believe that the, our sector is part of the solution. Uh, we have many database, uh, data, uh, science science base that exercise is is uh, is uh, elemental for the health of the of the people and for the uh, and for the live um, and for the life of the people but uh, as well there are many science base that uh, uh, the immunological system uh, the one of the main improvers is the exercise so is needed that, that the exercise the people makes exercise always but more now with COVID. Even we are asking now here in Spain that they have three pillars, which is maintain the social distance, uh, clean your hands, uh, wear masks, and we are pushing. So exercise is the four pillar for the campaign of the Spanish government for the people. So then we, we went to the epidemiologists and we went to the to do to two universities, one in Spain, Universidad Juan Carlos I, and, and another in Britain, uh, the Sheffield Holland University, and typically yes, uh, to recommend to us uh, which one is the safest uh, environment uh, to be to be uh, for the citizens, and we discovered that our industry is an industry that prepare for the cleanest and for the hygienic uh, uh, procedures uh, always, and as well our, our customers are people ready to maintain hygienic uh, uh, protocols, and as well our people is. So, uh, how can we improve to have the, the safest uh, environment for the for the customer? Uh, you know that we have, uh, for the surveys that we have around, uh, there are around 40% of the people that say that will come to the gym immediately, 50% not until the vaccine, and the other ones are, are, are between the people that don't know. They don't know. I think that for us, uh, it's very relevant to uh, put on the scenario that people need to do exercise uh, as a mandatory to elevate the Im 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 immunological system, and that we can offer the best, the, the safest, uh, the most, uh, the best place close to the total security of all the experiences that the, our customers can have in the, in the, in the tube, in the, in, in the bus, a taxi, supermarket, a shop, uh, a cinema, uh, even uh, we are, uh, even in the own home, we are offering in GoFit, we are working to have protocols to have a better environment and better air that even in, in, a, that in an operations room. And as well, we are working about having uh, the best customer experience uh, for the customers, doing a, a heavy uh, investment in, in equipment and in protocols so we can offer the best uh, customer experience for our customers. Please, next slide. So there you have the ranking done by these universities and the epidemiologists over eight, which one are the points that we can offer to a customer when, when, when wherever we are able to open, we are, we are going to, to, to be able to deserve for them this, this level of security. Please, if we go to the next one. This is, uh, here is the mathematics uh, 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 scale that, that we put, uh, well, we didn't, they did it for us. So you can see how is a scientific uh, method. Please, next one, please. 
this is uh, how are we going to communicate to the to our to our customers uh, uh, you need to do exercise reinforce the immunity system uh, we can offer to you uh, the gyms uh, can be almost close to 100 percent a safe place and, and do it with us do it do it with the with the prescribers of exercise next one please and now uh, uh, now, ending, ending what I need to tell to you is that I know that we are all in pain, uh, but we are entrepreneurs and we want to be trading. Uh, but let me tell you uh, this too. Our societies also are in pain. They have never faced a challenge like this one. In this moment, at least our generation, the public uh, deserve our love, our support and our care. It is critical that we take our responsibility in this moment seriously and that we take all the time that is needed to prepare and make sure that we open safely. I'm not talking about when, I am talking that, that whenever we open, we open on the safest way and, with the, and we break the message that can be surround the air, that the gyms are dangerous places. We are not dangerous places. We can offer the best place uh, to be for the customers uh, uh, all, for all the months that we are going to live together with the COVID-19. We can offer the best place for the, for the, for the customers and customers need to do exercise and we are the providers of the of the of this of this uh, of this exercise, and, and and this means that we have to be ready as an industry to say not one second too soon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gabriel. Um, now, after these presentations, we have time for questions and. I would like to start off with a question we received for all three panelists. And the question is a general one, and it says, how will our sector be different post-corona crisis? While you're still in, uh, in, in, in vision, Gabriel, would you like to tackle that one first? So how will our sector be different post-corona? Well, I think that the sector has a strong opportunity to grow. I think that uh, Corona is putting on the mindset of the customers the need of being, uh, of being in good health. But as well, I think that is an opportunity uh, for us as a sector, and even we are involved in the sector of sports, to be on the first spot of the government. Uh, I think this is the, is the time to take in seriously that sport and the exercise is, uh, is, should be should be one of the main spots of, of everybody. So I expect that, that, that this will grow. And I think that, that this will, uh, this is, uh, I think that it, it will change. Thank you, Gabriel. Rene, would you like to answer that question on how the sector will be different post-corona? Yes, well, if you look at uh, what has happened in uh, China, you see that uh, around 3,000 clubs haven't has closed their doors within the first month. So I'm sure uh, we will also in Europe see a lot of uh, clubs not opening uh, again. Um, that is, of course, uh, uh, the sad part. But I do agree with uh, Gabriel that for our sector, I see great opportunities. Uh, it is clear that we are uh, part of the solution. And it is also clear that uh, you have to work on a healthy body uh, if you want to uh, uh, live uh, healthy and uh, happy. Thank you, Rene. Humphrey? Yeah, I, I'd only echo what's been said. I think, you know, to Rene's point, I think very tough for everybody in the next six to 12 months, and there will, I'm afraid, be some casualties, and that's a great shame. It really is. In the longer term for the industry, I think we are the product that people will need more of. Um, it will change. I think digital and online and different ways of doing exercise will increase, and we've got to invest to be able to support that. Uh, but I'm, I'm optimistic in the long run. Very good. Staying with you, Humphrey, for a second question we received, and that's more a personal one to all three of you. What has been the biggest positive eye-opener for you personally in how you or your organization has handled this unprecedented crisis so far? Humphrey, what would be your answer to that one? Um, the, look, that's very straightforward for me. The, the extraordinary character, um, courage, and professionalism that um, every single one of my colleagues has shown in dealing with an incredibly difficult situation. It took 10 years to build our business in the UK uh, and I had to send young, in the main, young men and women out 
to close down their places of earning their livelihood. And they had that done professionally and properly within 10 hours. Um, and I think their continued character through the lockdown has been um, you know, truly remarkable and is a real testament to human character in general, but to each and every one of them in particular. Thank you. Renee, what would be your answer to that question? Yeah, actually, uh, I agree. We have a similar uh, story, uh, what Humphrey said. I'm really proud of uh, the team we've been working uh, with and what they have done uh, in the last few weeks and what we have built and how we have uh, grown as a company in the last few weeks. Really amazing, uh, really an eye-opener. I knew we had a good team, but this really, we actually having a great team. I think another eye-opener is uh, this all working from home and all the things you can accomplish while everybody's working from home. It is funny that in some of the Zoom meetings you see children running around and <laughs> jumping on somebody's head, but uh, still a lot of work uh, is being done and uh, yeah, you really see uh, that we have a really good community, a really good uh, working spirit in our uh, team. So that was a big eye, again, uh, uh, this whole working from home works actually uh, really well. And I think also in the future, uh, I, don't, I always was a big fan of meeting everybody, shaking hands, of course, <laughs> that, that will for sure be different. But, uh, but meeting somebody, looking them in the eye and, and having a good conversation. Uh, but uh, with this current uh, systems that are in place, that is definitely not necessary. Uh, again. Okay, thank you. Um, then the next question I have here is, are there any best practices for charging clients for online fitness services? So are there any best practices for charging clients for online fitness services? Who would volunteer to answer that question? Well, I could say something about it because in the beginning we charge for it as a company based fit, we charge four euros for it. Uh, per month and it was really a good system with uh, not only virtual classes but also advice on uh, how to prepare food and, and stuff like that we spend millions a year on it for many years already and only three four percent of our customers uh, used it uh, so spending a lot of money investing a lot of time and only three four percent using it so we changed our uh, system and we then uh, increased our price uh, a bit and we put it into our uh, uh, in the price of the club membership. And now we see that a lot of people are using it uh, and also frequently. So I'm not sure, it is uh, difficult uh, to charge. Uh, you could, uh, for us it worked better to, to put it in a package instead of just selling it as a separate uh, a product. Okay. That's our experience. I, I, I would echo that, um, Herman, is always exactly the same finding that we had. Um, we hadn't invested quite as much as Renee had, it, had in it, but uh, I, I think we, our, our view is this is a difficult market to make money in because there is massive supply of free exercise activity online on YouTube and every other platform out there. Uh, we see it largely as a complementary product to our core offering certainly free at the moment. Maybe we'll be able to capture some value from it in the future. I think it's just going to be a part of our business and what we offer people. Uh, yeah. Herman, Herman uh, I didn't put my, my answer about the open eye. Yes, uh, please. Uh, I should say, uh, I'm going to be uh, short, but uh, teams absolutely discover the powerful team that we have in GoFit, how uh, people is, is getting bigger uh, with the crisis and the valuable opinion of every single member of the of the team has been fantastic and, and amazing as well i need to put as well on the board the on the table how the sector generally is being open and more unified all 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 the trade sector how we are growing as well um i'm going to the um i'm going to the the other question about the online uh, I agree with uh, Rene and with Humphrey that uh, that uh, I think that this is a comp as as we have now shown this this is a complementary service is very difficult to charge at least you start to discover programs specific programs for the for the customers very specific programs but I think that that the most relevant thing is that 
this is going to be to stay with us. This is a complementary service that, uh, that after this, uh, we are gonna uh, need to have for our customers, free probably, and to increase the traceability of the customers, to be able to give the, the, our customers the service 24 hours seven, uh, outside from our walls, uh, even I think that is only a complementary service. Thank you. Um, I, Nerio, are you still online? I yes. think you want to, you yes, want to, yeah, you, I think you wanted to say something. Yes. Can you open the, the, the video, please? I, th I think you have to do that yourself on your, on the top of your screen. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. We can see you now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Arman, and thank you everybody for the attention. Uh, uh, I would like to congratulate uh, Rene, Gabriel, and uh, about the very amazing uh, best practice and uh, uh, opportunity. I agree with you about each crisis to represent a huge opportunity. We have in front of us the COVID war and the accelerated uh, digital transformation. But if we serve the digital transformation, we have the possibility to transform the, 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 the market from 7-8% of the population in 20-25 population uh, in terms of engagement. And uh, we have an uh, amazing opportunity to engage government, family doctors, insurance, uh, and all the stakeholders around uh, uh, the territory. The club is to represent the hub. The club is like the hub. And we need to, to transform the, the, the club in the wellness hub. And thanks to the wellness on the go strategy, through the ecosystem, through the lifestyle management uh, and user journey, we have the possibility to increase attraction, retention, secondary spend, and to evolve the business model. And uh, I am afraid, but I am positive. We need to think in the long term and to strengthen strategic partnership with the strategic uh, uh, stakeholders. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for this webinar. It's very, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nerio. Uh, I would like to ask a question now um, that has been asked by quite a few people, and I'll read it out. Um, it says, hello, everyone. It seems that the fitness world is split between these that want to open as soon as possible, given that restrictions are acceptable, and those that want to reopen later, expecting a new normal. What are your views? And Humphrey has already indicated he would like to answer that question. Yeah, sure. Um, look, uh, uh, where we are on this is uh, I'm not looking to open in the very front line of reopenings. And I think there are two or three reasons for that. Uh, firstly, um, I, I think we want to understand more about how consumers in general are responding to things. Uh, secondly, I think we have to recognise we have some particular challenges in our sector to look after our colleagues in the front line in our facilities um, and um, our members. Um, and um, uh, th thirdly, um, I think yeah, we'll benefit from the sort of time to make sure that when we come to open, uh, we'll be really ready. Our current plan is to open half a dozen, um, maybe a dozen sites to begin with in the first week, and then to go from there and to learn um, how we make the new models and the new requirements uh, work. And that may lead to us opening up quite quickly thereafter, or it may take longer, and that's fine. My view is we've been closed for eight or 10 weeks, whether it's a couple of weeks longer or not, probably isn't gonna make a huge amount of difference. What will make a difference is how good a job we do uh, for our members. So I'm keen to open, nobody's keener than me, but I'm most keen to make sure that we give ourselves the time to open properly and learn about the new normal in which we find ourselves. Thank you, Humphrey. Rene, would you like to add to that? No, I completely agree. Uh, I think it is uh, very important that uh, what I said before, that we, if we open, we do it correctly. I remember uh, before we closed, the French government said we could have only 50 people in our clubs. So we stopped at 50, but then we had also 50 people uh, waiting in the hallway. Of course, that is not very helpful. Uh, so next day we closed all our gyms, even before we had to close them. So also with opening, we, uh, we for sure will uh, take it uh, easy and uh, like uh, Humphrey said, do it in a smaller group. If it works, then close, uh, open more. But we're active in uh, five countries and we do not expect all countries to open in the same day or same week. So for that, uh, I think we can learn from the first club that we are opening. Thank you, Gabriel. 
And yes. also, I agree with my colleagues. I think that this is not, uh, I think that we should think in, in this crisis in about 12, 16 months more with this at least. And um, uh, the, the balance is not economics if, is, if I am best, uh, better close or open. To me, the balance is that we have only one coin. And the coin that we have is to offer a safe environment to our customers. If we do that, we will win the battle. If we don't, if we don't do that, uh, we will lose the battle. And think that there is lots of literacy and media that uh, that put the the gyms on on the worst scenario of of the worst place to be with COVID-19, and we are not. So again, we only got, we only have one coin, and we and we need to use that coin on the proper way, and to show the society that we are safe places and to learn about operation and about the COVID more before we open. Absolutely. Thank you, Gabriel. Next question I would like to put on the table is the following. Um, how, how do, sorry, this is going. I'd love to know if Renee and Humphrey think it's easier to keep members paying memberships at low cost clubs where a good online offering may be perceived as almost equal in value. And if so, if they have any advice for premium operators. Uh, Humphrey, would you like to comment on that? Uh, my observation of that, given we operate across four countries and I've done several discussions with um, uh, other operators internationally, is this is much more determined by the local combination of local norms and indeed regulations. In the UK, it has proved almost impossible to charge people in any part of the industry for sites that are closed. Um, in Switzerland, where we have an operation, um, we've continued to renew memberships the way that Swiss people buy them pretty much normally throughout the, uh, throughout the crisis. Um, and I think most markets exist somewhere between those two um, extremes. I think that that seems to be more important than budget versus premium. And then final point in the US, I believe there have been some class action lawsuits levied on some other operators who kept uh, trying to charge people when gyms were closed. So you see a full spectrum um, out there. Uh, Rene will probably have a view given his multiple geographies on this too. Over to Rene, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, we, we're still also, uh, my son is running some Health City uh, premium uh, club, so I also looked at that, but I think it's similar to, uh, to Basic Fit. I think it is uh, highly unacceptable. Just a small group of people are willing to pay when they're not being compensated. Uh, um, and that's the same for, uh, we saw the same, exactly the same for Health City. So I think it is not wise to, uh, to keep, keep doing a direct debit if you do not compensate. I think, of course, for, for, for in different countries, there are different possibilities maybe. Uh, but, but overall, uh, I would say as a company, you shouldn't want to continue to uh, d doing the direct debit while you cannot offer much. And, and again, of course, if you charge 20 euros, it is easier to give away than uh, 80. Uh, but we had like a, a very small group uh, altogether. I think it was uh, a few percent of our customer base who said, well, you can keep doing the direct debit whenever you, as long as you're closed. So there was still uh, many ten thousands of people, but it's, it was a small part of our total community. But a big part, 75% said, you can do the direct debit till 1st of May, but you have to compensate me. And I think that's also fair. Yeah, thank you. Next question, and we're running almost out of time for the questions, but I have to take one more. To all the participants in the panel, do you think a large percentage of small competitors will go out of business? Will this create the opportunity for newcomers to enter the market with a low rental base? Anybody volunteer to answer that question? Well, I think there's always uh, room for new uh, players. And I think it's, it's great when new products or new uh, types of way of exercising come to market. I think that will only help us all uh, if we keep doing, if everybody keeps doing exactly the same what we're doing right now, the industry will not go anywhere. So yes, uh, I'm sure uh, uh, some clubs will close down and some other clubs will step in or uh, start something new. And I think that's all also in a normal way of doing business, I guess. But, but this uh, corona, uh, of course, made it uh, harder and faster for some players. Thank you. Anybody else would like to comment on that? No? Yeah. Then 
uh, I would like to close off the Q&A session. There's many more questions that we couldn't uh, address uh, just for the sake of time, uh, but we will try and get back to those people who have left their email address with us and get back to them and answering those questions afterwards. Uh, so uh, I would like to thank Nerio, Gabrielle, Renee and Humphrey for their time and their efforts in putting this together. Well done guys, very, very informative. And I would like to now pass the parole on to our Executive Director in Europe Active, uh, my friend Andreas Paulsen to say some final words. Andreas, are you there? Herman, yeah. thank you so much for, um, for moderating this and putting this uh, webinar together for us. Thank you, Silke and, and Fibo, Nero, Gabriel, Humphrey, and Renee for, um, for making this possible. Um, as you most of you will know, this is, uh, was another webinar in, uh, in our role of educational webinars where we as Europe Active uh, try to uh, provide the highest level of expertise and, and, and knowledge and business insight for uh, our stakeholders across the, uh, the sector ecosystem. Um, we present our, our different webinars each week on our COVID-19 uh, webpage, which is on europeactive.eu slash COVID-19. And you can find on there, um, as I mentioned, all of our webinars, different uh, COVID-19 related material, material on reopening, the new normal, and so on. Europe Active has the ambition to be the intellectually leading force uh, across the, the industry, industry during this time, trying to rethink um, uh, our industry in order to reopen our industry as, as, as effectively and safely as possible. So a lot of that material coming out of that process is you can find on that website. The, the main purpose of uh, our educational webinars is to provide knowledge to, to safely return members, of course, to our clubs across Europe uh, and our businesses of our ecosystem and to get us back on track as an industry with our important mission to provide physical, social and men mental health for, um, for our users and, 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 and European citizens across the, the continent. Um, and one thing that makes us very um, optimistic and positive, um, uh, apart from all the challenges, is the massive support that we receive from, from members and users and, and our, our staff uh, across Europe, as, as uh, René and, and Humphrey and Gabriel has mentioned as, as well. And another thing that, that uh, is very encouraging is uh, the feedback we get from our dialogues with European institutions, EU institutions and the WHO, which we have a di direct uh, dialogue with um, on behalf of, of Europe Active and, and our industry. They are all very well aware uh, of the important role that our industry is, is, is playing and our, our important role um, going forward. So they are listening carefully to uh, the input that you provide us uh, with um, as Europe Active and that we, that we bring to the table with uh, EU institutions and the WHO. So that's quite encouraging. I just want to say uh, a few words about our, our webinar tomorrow. On retention, we have Paul Bedford um, um, and uh, Jamie Edwards speaking about uh, returning members to clubs and connecting with members during this, uh, this special time. Uh, that's tomorrow, Thursday, Thursday, the 30th of April. On Wednesday, the 6th of April, we have um, Herman moderating um, a, a very interesting uh, webinar again on the reopening, uh, reopening fitness stores, a world tour, um, where we have uh, Ronnie from, uh, from Rills Group and we have Sandra from uh, CEO of SATS uh, addressing the, uh, the issue of, of, uh, of reopening and looking at the data coming in from, um, from East Asia and, and comparing to the European situation and so on. So another very informative webinar coming up. Um, so please tune in. Uh, hope to see a lot of you there. And thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Andreas. Um, I wish everybody stay well, stay healthy, keep on exercising at home or outdoors if you can. And uh, hope to see you soon again in another Europe Active webinar. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye. Bye.